Hey guys, so we are back updating the power rankings for Australian Survivor Heroes vs. Villains following week two. And this was a more interesting week of the show as we definitely got more content from the heroes. And I feel like at this point, I have a bit more confidence in who the contenders are compared to week one. Although there are still some question marks over who the clear frontrunner is. But there are 20 players to talk about, and let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 20, we have the first boot from this week, and here we have Rogue. And I think it's safe to say that Rogue played a pretty astronomically bad game here, where from day one, she seemed to be a pretty clear outcast. She never seemed to have anyone on her side at any point. And really, the only reason that I had her as high as she was in last week's rating was because with the amount of content that she got that I didn't think that it would be that obvious, that I didn't think Australian Survivor would would be that obvious with her being the first boot but her game ended up being so bad that it was that obvious she was very clearly always going to be the first boot off that heroes tribe and when you add on top of that all the stuff that she says like during the season like a lot of it's pretty bad especially the set that she says to nina and while i do see her point in her saying that not everyone is a clear hero i mean the fact that she's saying this is not great doesn't really do her any good and at the end of the day, she is a pretty bad player. She never really had anyone on her side. And the only reason that she isn't voted out unanimously is to avoid an idle play through a split vote. But really, she never really had anyone on her side. And because of that, she is here at number 20. Now we're moving on to number 19, and we have the other boot from this week. But here we have Sarah. And Sarah is the one that I never had that much faith in to win the game. I felt like she had been pretty purple through the first two weeks. And even in her boot episode, she doesn't really get that much content until the scramble where she is shown talking to Simon and George it, that is even established that she is playing both sides and that people see her as a snake. And at the end of the day, I feel like Sarah played a pretty lackluster game where she did try to play actively. She did try to play both sides, but obviously in doing so, she didn't really build the social bonds to make people trust her. And at the end of the day, that caused a lot of people to flip on her to where it was pretty much a unanimous vote, which is even more mind boggling. So while I do appreciate the effort of her trying to play the middle, I think the fact that she was voted out so clearly really shows that she didn't really have anyone on our side and that she didn't really foster much trust with much people and mixing that with the edit i don't really have much to say on her so because of that she is here at number 19 and with that there are 18 players left in the game to talk about and as usual i'll be ranking them based on how likely they are to win the game based on their edit and current game position but at number 18 we have a player that i was pretty low on before and i'm still low on them now but here we have david and i asked this question last week but i'll ask it again who is David? Now, to who is credit, he does get a bit more content in this week where he is shown talking about the plan to blindside Haley, which doesn't go through. So even then, that's kind of a nothing thing. And he is technically the one to find the idol clue, but even then he hands it off to Sam. And ultimately, Sean is the one to find the idol. So really, I feel like David is the most purple person in the edit up to this point. I feel like he is the least important player within the men's alliance and really by extension in the entire game. I feel like there's nothing I can say about this guy at this point, which is why I do have him here at number 18. Now I'm moving on to number 17 and we have a player that's kind of similar to David, but I feel like we know him a little bit better. But here we have Frazier. And realistically, I think I had Frazier a little too high in my week one power ranking. But even then, I feel like he was someone that I felt like I got to know at least a little bit better. But I feel like now he has such a low priority within the edit to where his main focus is, I guess, his relationship with Jordy. So he's the second in command of Jordy, who, to be fair, is playing a pretty good game. But considering that Jordy himself isn't the most prominent player in the edit, I mean, I feel like I have nothing really to say about Frazier. And at this point, I don't feel that confident that he's going to win the game. So because of that, he is here at number 17. Now we're moving on to number 16. And we have the biggest course correction compared to week one. But here we have Simon. And I'll say it out loud. I made a mistake by putting Simon too high. I had a misread on his edit. Now, if I'm being honest, even by the time week two was starting, I was starting to regret my choice of having him at number one as I started to see more of the red flags and really started to take more weight in, into them. But I feel like now after seeing week two, 
yeah, it's pretty obvious he's not winning. Where even JLP is sort of mocking Simon in the previously on segments, where it's basically confirmed at this point that the idol isn't real, which obviously it's very bad. I mean, he himself seems to believe that the idol is real and that so much of his storyline is focused on him trying to play it correctly. And I feel like it's all just going to culminate with him trying to play the idol for him to find out that's not real and then for him to probably be voted out by George. So that's not great. And even outside that, he's just been dunked in the edit so much this past week where it's pretty much confirmed at this point that he has tunnel vision of voting out George. He even tried to vote out George again at the last tribal, but doesn't get his way there, which is pretty bad. You obviously have George and other people pointing out that he's bossy and that his ego is getting in the way, which completely contradicts his storyline of his ego, like being something that he wants to hold back. So I'll admit it, I made a mistake. Simon is clearly not winning this game. He's clearly being set up for a downfall. And I feel like all the stuff that I said last week about him being this warning side for George is more so a way of propping up George's edit. And we'll talk about George more when we get to him. But I feel like George is being set up for a deeper run than Simon is, which is pretty bad. Simon's end, I feel like Simon is being set up for a downfall. And I made a mistake, but now I'm correcting it. And because of that, he is here at number 16. Now we're moving on to number 15. And I did consider putting this person a bit lower on the list, but I did decide to bump them up just a little bit. But here we have Benjamin. And this was a pretty bad week for Benjamin, where his main content is in episode 5, where he gets his intro package and he's talking about being a journalist and how he's going to get people to trust him. And he even goes as far as to say that his strategy is to play a loyal and honest game which is then immediately followed by him making a fake idol for seemingly no reason, and in doing so, completely undercuts all the trust that he was talking about building, and it seemed like he is on the outs more so than it seemed on the surface. Now, yes, it does seem like Haley and maybe Nina and Flick are kind of on his side, but considering that he himself has not gotten too much content, I can't really justify putting him too much higher, Although I will say that there is at least some potential they can make a deep run beyond this, but I feel like with how quiet his edit has been and how immediate the undercutting was after he got his intro package, was enough to leave him here at number 15. Now we're moving on to number 14, and we have someone who I literally just mentioned, but here we have Nina. And I still stand by what I said last week about her probably being someone that should have gotten way more content than she actually did, but it's due to her not getting that content that really made me unconfident in her chances. And even now, I still think Nina has no shot of actually winning the game. However, this week was a bit better for her, where she does get a bit more content. Now, yes, not all of it's great, where she does talk about targeting Ben due to Benjamin showing his cards by making a fake idol, but then that doesn't end up happening. So I feel like that's pretty bad. And even outside that, it's not really enough content to justify me putting her any higher than number 14 here. Now we're moving on to number 13, and we have someone very similar to Nina, but here we have Flick. And I feel like Flick got the edge, as I feel like she got a bit more meaningful content where she does get to talk about working with Haley and how she's using Haley as a shield. And we even see her towards the end of that episode, her talking to Sean and the other guys about keeping her around until right before the merge, before cutting her. So I feel like that alone makes it a bit more significant in my eyes compared to what Nina got. But at the end of the day, I still can't really justify her being any higher on the list, especially considering how quiet she's been outside of that. So because of that, I, I do have her here at number 13. Now we're moving on to number 12, and we have another returnee on the Heroes Tribe, but here we have Sam. And I think Sam has the most consistent presence between Nina and Flick, where he does seem to be emerging as a bit of a narrator. Now granted, a lot of his content is talking about them winning the rewards, which again, is a bit boilerplate. However, he does also seem to be building this rivalry with Sean, where Sean is talking about like him being naive and him hiding the idol from them, despite the fact that they're supposed to be allies. However, I also think Sam has been prata to a degree as well, which makes me think Sam is being set up for a relatively deep run. And Sam did get a bit more content, like in week one, that makes me a bit more comfortable in me having him this high in the list. 
but I still feel like he's not a major character in the grand scheme of things, which is why I have him here at number 12. Now I'm moving on to number 11, and we have someone that literally got no content this week, but they definitely got some stuff in week one. But here we have Liz, and realistically, Liz is probably a bit too high given the amount of content that she's gotten. However, the main reason she's as high is because of her relationship with Shawnee, who I do think is a major character. Now, obviously, we'll talk more about Shawnee later on, but I think that alone is enough to give Liz a bit of longevity in the game and at least some potential to overshadow Shawnee in the case that Shawnee is taken out earlier in the game. Now, at the end of the day, I still don't feel that great about Liz given her lack of content, but it's at least enough to have her here in number 11. Now we're moving on to number 10, and we have someone who realistically should be a bit lower on the list. However, I still can't shake their premiere, but here we have Matt, and Matt was pretty invisible this week. He got very little content, and yes, we do know that he's part of the Guys Alliance, but outside of that, there isn't really too much to prop him up for. Really, the only reason that I have him even this high on the list is because of his premiere, which I felt like was a pretty good episode for him. But mixing that in with the fact that he hasn't really gotten anything since then, I can't really justify putting him any higher than this. Although considering what he has gotten, I feel like it's enough to have him at least in somewhat high contention compared to these other figures, which is why I have him here at number 10. Now I'm moving on to number 9, and we have someone who I definitely juggled around a little bit between these next couple of spots. However, for this list, I did decide to bump them down compared to what I had them before. But here we have Paige. And obviously, some not great stuff has come out about Paige in recent days, particularly with her being a trophy hunter, and say what you will about that. However, I feel like compared to some of the other heroes, I feel like there's a bit more I can say about Paige's game. Now, at the end of the day, like there isn't that much I can say to have her in super high contention. Although she did technically get her way in voting out Rogue, someone who had a personal vendetta against her, largely due to the trophy hunting thing. And then in episode 6, she does get to talk about her grandmother during the reward, which granted was a bit circumstantial, but still she was a pretty big highlight during that scene. And I feel like she has gotten a bit more content, a bit more of a consistent presence than a lot of these other newbies on the Heroes Tribe. But at the end of the day, I don't really feel like there's enough to have her any higher than here. So because of that, I do have her here at number 9. Now we're moving on to number 8, and I'm a bit shocked this person is at least this high, considering their content for this week, but also just who they are, but it kind of makes sense. But here we have Stevie, and Stevie was mostly quiet during this week. Now we did learn that he was part of Simon, Jordy, and Fraser's alliance, although he was very clearly set up as the fourth person in that alliance. And really, he doesn't get much content until episode 6, where he is presented as the swing vote, where George approaches him about flipping against Sarah, who was shown on the show to be more aligned with the Simon side of things. And he does get that content talking about being the swing vote, only for it to be a unanimous vote against Sarah. So take that as you will, but he at least got that, and I still feel like he is being set up to be an important character on the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was able to make a move down the road, like taking out Shawnee. But again, we'll have to see what happens there. But I feel like there's more I can say about Stevie to be a major character in the future that has him here at number 8. Now we're moving on to number 7. And this person took a pretty big jump from last week to where they're now pretty clearly a important character on the season. But here we have Sean. And I'm sure this is a bit lower than what some people are expecting. I know there are people that are saying that he is now in winner's contention because of this. And to be fair, I think there is at least some credence to that. However, after this week, I'm under the impression that he's being set up for a downfall later on. Where, yes, he is shown being this main character and he is shown explaining his game. Like, keeping around Haley as a shield and him finding the idol. However, there's other stuff that isn't as great. Like, he does decide to hide the idol from his allies for seemingly no good reason. Now, yes, the show does explain it as him embracing being a villain because last time, you know, like, being a hero didn't work out for him, which, sure, I guess. But I feel like there wasn't any setup to that in week one, despite the fact that he got an intro package at the very beginning of the season, so I can't really bump him to up because of that. And even beyond that, he is pretty out in front. He is someone who, again, is like being shown being strategic and keeping around Haley and stuff, but Haley herself has also gotten plenty of good content there, 
And I feel like he is also being set up as an opposition against Jerry and Charny, which I'll be talking about more in a moment. But I feel like he is being set up to lose this battle that will culminate with all these various figures. And we even saw on the Next On segment that there are people that are already recognizing him as being pretty out in front. So I feel like that's not particularly great on his end. And plus, his whole guys alliance hasn't exactly been propped up as super positive either. So at the end of the day, there is a very real chance that Sean can be taken out down the road and that he is simply going to be a big character, more of an antagonist for the season more than anything else. And it's mainly his spiking content and his relevance to the story that keeps him this high on the list, though it's my believe that he is ultimately going to lose this battle that leaves him a bit lower at number seven. Now we're moving on to number six and we have another player that had a massive spike in content although it's more so because of two episodes instead of all three but here we have Jerry and I'm pretty shocked that Jerry is this high on the list but considering his content from this past week I feel like it's pretty warranted and at the end of the day I don't think he's a very likely winner either however there are a couple major things going for him. One is that he has a pretty clearly established relationship with Sharni, to where Sharni didn't vote to send him to the other tribe of the tribal that she voted for Paige instead. So I feel like that's a pretty good thing. And I feel like the show itself is presenting that as a pretty important relationship. But even beyond that, once he goes over to the villain's tribe, he gets some pretty good content there. He gets his intro package. And yes, while well, I could say that that's circumstantial, he is then shown being courted by these various players, including George, who he ultimately sides with. And considering that I think George is going to be a pretty important character in the season, I feel like that's another thing that props up Jerry's game as well. And you also have Sean, who said early on that he thinks Jerry was going to be the next boot, and obviously Jerry is not the next boot and isn't even considered a target. So I think that's another thing that has Jerry in high contention. And the main reason that I have Jerry above Sean is I feel like Jerry is being set up as more of the hero in this story compared to Sean. Whereas I feel like there's eventually going to be this rivalry that'll break out in which Sean will lose that battle, but Jerry's side will ultimately win out. So I think that's enough to have Jerry at least assign the list. Plus, I feel like he got pretty good content in these last two episodes. Now, granted, I still think there are other people that are more likely to win the game than he himself. But I feel like his connection to other players and his overall relevance to what's happening is enough to have him here at number six. Now we're moving on to number five and we have someone who I'm a bit conflicted on but I have her at least this high but here we have Haley and I'm not sure what to make of Haley's edit at this point where on one hand I think she gets some pretty good stuff like her overcoming the first tribal and the winner's curse which is something although I will say that from a pure gameplay perspective her throwing the challenge was pretty unnecessary in my view but whatever but she gets that. And I feel like she is being set up for stuff beyond that, where she is obviously feeding George information to where it does seem like they have a pretty good relationship. And I think she is like understanding that she needs to play more under the radar to lower her own threat level. So I think those are at least some things I can point to. But then there are other things that aren't as great, like the fact that obviously people are targeting her to where even Flick, someone who I think she's pretty close to compared to other people, has talked to the Guys Alliance about keeping her on as a shield and literally saying that they're going to cut her right before the merge, which is not great in my view. So I still think Kaylee is someone that could realistically go either way, where on one hand, I could easily see her being cut right before the merge, where despite her surviving all these rounds, that's largely due to immunity and also the fact that people are simply keeping her around as a shield to where she'll eventually fall into that trap and be taken out shortly thereafter. But on the other hand, I think there's enough things that can point to her having a deeper run beyond that and for her to potentially overcome these obstacles, such as Sean being set up for a downfall in my view. The fact that she has a relationship with George, someone who is very similar to her in terms of him being targeted. And I think there is a path forward for Haley. Now, it's my uncertainty of where that path will lead that leaves her a bit lower on this list. But I feel like the fact that that path is at least there is enough to have her here at number five. Now I'm moving on to number four and we have someone who is very similar to Haley, but here we have George. And this was obviously a quieter week for George, which considering it's George isn't exactly the worst thing in the world, but he still gets content in episode six, mainly around him courting Jerry and Jerry does ultimately side with George. 
And considering that I think Jerry and Charney are going to be important to the story moving forward, I think that's pretty good there. You also saw Simon continuing to get dunked in the edit. And considering that Simon is pretty opposed to George, I think George is ultimately going to win that battle at this point. And I think with his relationship with Haley and the fact that Haley is being able to relay this information to him does give me some like hope for George that he could do well moving forward. Now, at the end of the day, I still have similar issues with Haley in that I'm not sure how much of this is just George being kept around as a shield, as at the end of the day, he's still a pretty big target, and I can't exactly ignore that. There is still a very real chance that he could be taken out relatively soon due to him being such a big threat, but I feel like he's been getting relatively positive content despite that. So I feel like with that, plus his path forward, I think there is enough promise to have him at least this high on the list, though I feel that the top three people have more blatant cases for winning the game. So because of that, I do have him here at number four. Now we're moving on to number three, and we have the highest ranked person that I had on last week's rating still on the board, but here we have Shawnee. And obviously Shawnee was pretty much invisible this week. She didn't really have anything to do, which similar to George, isn't the worst thing in the world considering how big her week one was. However, I think there is a debate for her being lower than George because I feel like there was more content this week that set up George more for the future than for Shawnee, whereas Shawnee pretty much got nothing during this entire week. And obviously that's not ideal. However, the main reason I have her above George despite that is that I feel like from a pure game perspective, I feel like Shawnee is less likely to be carried around just as a shield compared to George. Whereas I feel like I still have that concern with George that he could just be like another Sandra who was taken out at the first opportunity after the swap. But I feel like even so, I can't really have Shawnee any higher than here simply because of how invisible she was and how I feel like other people did more to advance their stories this past week. So because of that, I do over here number three. Now I'm moving on to number two and I did debate this a little bit as this person isn't exactly in the best game position right now. However, I still was impressed by their content, but here we have Jordy. And again, I'm still surprised by Jordy and how well he's doing despite the target that I felt like he would have on his back coming into the season where he has largely been able to lie low and not really like cause anyone to not trust him too much, which I think is pretty good there. And he has gotten a pretty good set of content across these episodes where he obviously got that very random scene at the beginning of episode five where he's just hanging out with Frasier and just talking about getting time to relax. But even beyond that, he has shown kind of being the voice of reason compared to Simon, who I think at this point is kind of losing it. Like he is talking to Simon about the idol, trying to convince him that maybe it's not simply an idol as he seems to think it is. But even beyond that, he has shown like trying to, again, branch out from Simon to not make his game solely dependent on Simon. He's calling out Simon for him being bossy and how he's letting his ego blind him. But even beyond that, while he is still on Simon's side and is still part of his alliance, he is shown talking with George and trying to get George to work together. But obviously, he does recognize that it could come back to burn him, which is probably a bit of a knock at the end of the day. But I still feel like Jordy is playing this game relatively well, and I feel like we are getting a good sense of that game being played, unlike some other players that I feel like could be playing good games, but we just aren't seeing it yet. So I still find myself so unimpressed by Jordy. And I think it's the fact that he has shown being branching out from Simon that is a big reason I have him at least this high on the list, as it shows that his game is not solely dependent on Simon, even though he is technically working with him for the time being. Now, again, there is a debate for him being too high, as I feel like the show isn't going out as much out of its way to prop up his game and his future storyline compared to other people. But it's still that consistent content that makes me think that it's going to be around for a while that does have him here at number two. And now, at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Australian Survivor Heroes vs. Villains at this point is Sharni. Now, I will say that her edit hasn't been perfect up to this point, where I feel like her biggest issue is she was pretty invisible during those first two episodes, and it really wasn't until episode three that she started to get any content, and that could be a red flag moving forward that could obviously put her lower on this list. But I feel like this was a very strong week for her where she is shown right out the gate building this very strong bond with Jerry because he reminds her of her grandfather, which by itself is pretty good. But I think what elevates it more is the fact that the show literally cuts away to a picture of her with her actual grandfather really to drill home this point, which makes me think that this is going to be an important relationship moving forward. 
And moving forward, she talks about, again, how close she is to Jerry, even though he's being targeted, and that she says that while she's willing to cut him in order to prevent his injury from getting worse and also to stay within the majority, she is obviously upset by all this, and she doesn't want to actually write down Jerry's name. Now, obviously, she does vote for uh, Paige in order to uphold that promise, but obviously, she doesn't get her way there. So I feel like through that end, like it's not only setting up this as an important relationship, but also showing how she's mixing that in with the game and that she's still having level game talk at the end of the day. And moving forward, we see Jerry gain pretty strong content with him recognizing that his position within the Heroes Tribe isn't as solid as he thought and that he needs to consider other options moving forward. But considering that Sharni was someone who, again, didn't even vote him out, I think he will probably keep Sharni in that, which obviously benefits her game. And I think Sharni is being set up pretty well moving forward, not only for herself with the content that she's been getting, but also with her being set up against Sean, like for them, like ganging up against Jerry at that last tribal, again, really highlighting her position on the tribe and her need to really prop herself up moving forward. And also other people like Jerry getting set up for a storyline. You have people like George who are interested in working with Jerry and possibly Sharni moving forward as well. I think there's a lot of things going Sharni's way right now that makes me feel pretty confident in her. Now again, her edit is not perfect. I think her premiere was pretty invisible and I think that could come back to bite her towards the end of it. But I feel like compared to everyone else, I feel like this was definitely the best week for her. And I feel like for the time being, she's probably the person that I have the most confidence in winning, at least among the newbies. But when we're mixing in the returnees as well, I think she is one of the best cases to win based on her edit. So because of that, she is here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out with the channel. Now, obviously, I'll be back again next week to update the Power Rankings again. So stay tuned for that. Survivor 44 is now well within the preseason, so you can expect more content on that moving forward. And if you haven't already, be sure to join my Discord server, which I'll leave a link to join in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.